divine truth frequently ask questions. Jesus, Mary and others provide answers to questions that are frequently asked by members of the media and public. The subject of this session is spirits. This is session two. What are some examples of negative spirit influence? Well, again, a large amount of examples of negative spirit influence, uh, just as many examples of negative spirit influence as there are of positive spirit influence. A negative spirit influence can be organised, uh, just as positive spirit influence can be organised. In other words, groups of people in the spirit world getting together, organising negative influence on the earth. And it can also be opportunistic, individual opportunistic type of influence, where a person in the spirit world sees a certain type of condition inside of a person on earth and takes the opportunity to influence them in the moment. In terms of the organised influence, well, a lot of that is about the world's religions and the world's politics and the world's economic system and the, world, uh, and, and the world's medical system and profession, all sorts of professional systems are influenced negatively. Many of them have been greatly influenced negatively by spirits over the, over the periods of time. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the results of such systems, you can see the negative influences of these systems. So if you look, for example, at the world political system and also the underlying principle of the, um, the United Nations, mm -hmm. you can see that the, the five biggest nations on the Security Council of the United Nations are also the five biggest weapons manufacturers of the world. Mm -hmm. And those weapons cause a mass destruction on this planet continuously. And so obviously they're getting negative, they're getting influenced by very, very dark and evil spirits to, into self-destruction. Mm. And there has been times in human history where we've come very, very close to self-destruction as a complete self-destruction as a result of the spirits who are negative attempting to do that. Then there's also, there's all, so that's the organised mm. uh, negative influences. Mm -hmm. Then there's the sort of more disorganised opportunistic influences that occur usually individually. Yeah. And these kind of influences occur through our addiction. So when we on earth are living in a certain type of addiction uh, of, with, with trying to avoid a certain type of emotion and we use certain methods including certain substances in order to avoid things, then spirits have great opportunities to take opportunity to, to take the moment, seize the moment, and cause us to be influenced into a certain direction that's out of harmony with love quite frequently. Mm. And so there are very many of those spirits, much more, many more of those spirits than there are the spirits who do this organised global influence. Um, it's just the spirits who are doing the organised global influence in a negative direction are very organised. They've spent many years becoming organised mm -hmm. and they are quite entrenched in today's society through connections, through politics and religion and through the economics in particular. Whereas the individuals that are in the spirit world that are more opportunistic, they just go around looking for the opportunity to have something. So, you know, you might have a guy in the spirit world who's going around looking for the opportunity to have sex, you know, mm -hmm. and he, he doesn't have many women where he lives in the spirit world and so therefore he's never experienced sex in the spirit world. He's still trying to experience it on earth. So he just wants to go around and find a guy on earth or a woman on earth who he can influence into having lots of sexual encounters that he can feed off of them through an addiction. Mm -hmm. and, and if he finds someone who's better than the one he's with, he'll go for that person. Um, there are also many spirits who think they're doing good when actually they do a lot of damage. So the, you see this a lot in families where a family member who's passed over thinks they're helping a grandchild when the reality is the grandchild's getting sick or even getting a disease um, because of the influence of the spirit. So you see many diseases such as childhood onset leukaemia, for example, childhood onset diabetes, uh, another, another disease. You see these kind of diseases which are the direct results of the parents being open, opening their own influence to the child and the grandparent who might have passed or a great grandparent who might have passed now can influence the child and connect to them and as a result of connecting to them cause the disease that the grandparent actually had. 
So just to clarify a couple of things that you just said, the parent opens their influence. You mean, what do you mean by well, that? Well, because they're a family member, we're normally pretty open to them. We're, we're, open, mm -hmm. we're often open to things that a family member would do that we would not allow a normal person to do to us. So but even if I'm a, I'm a parent with a child and I don't, I don't know what you're talking about right here. Mm -hmm. I've never thought about spirits or whether I'm open to my, mm -hmm. my mother who's just passed or not. Mm -hmm. How can I still be enabling this interaction to happen? Well, let's say uh, you're a parent and you have a mother who's passed and she had cancer. She died of cancer, mm -hmm. as an example. She died of cancer. She's passed. Now, cancer is caused through the suppression of a lot of a anger and, mm -hmm. a, and, and also the suppression of a lot of addiction, addictive emotions. So the mother, the grandmother who passed would still have those emotions. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the majority of them would still think they've got the cancer, actually. They'll mm -hmm. look at their physical form and still see it as a cancer. And, and so they've passed over. Now, most of the time, a person who's done that will have an addictive relationship with their children. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the child has an openness to influence from that particular parent. Sure. Now, the openness of the child will cause the grandchild to be completely exposed to the grandparent's influence. Now, if the grandparent then chooses to cloak over, overcloak, which we'll talk about in a later question, or, or influence the grandchild, mm -hmm. then often the grandparent's emotions start influencing the grandchild and the grandparent's sicknesses start entering the grandchild. And this is where you said um, where spirits think they're doing a good thing. Yep, and so the grandmother is probably thinking she's doing a good thing. Helping out her beautiful little granddaughter who perhaps she didn't get to meet or whatever. Yep. And so she's yep. she becomes very attracted to this little girl yes. and thinks she's there to help her and love her. Yes, but, but it's an addiction in, yep. the grandma, in the grandmother. So because of her unloving emotions that she's not... Not aware of. Not aware of and not wanting to take responsibility for, yep. she then creates this relationship with her granddaughter yes. where actually because she still has the emotions in her spirit body that have that caused created the cancer. illness, mm -hmm. this begins to impact on the granddaughter and Correct. she begins to get unwell. Exactly. The and she'll get a cancer. She'll get uh, probably leukaemia, childhood leukaemia. Uh-huh. And so the grandmother thinks she's doing a good thing, but actually she's causing cancer. She's causing the death of her grandchild yeah. yep, without really being aware of it. Yeah. This happens very, very frequently. Mm -hmm. Almost all childhood onset diseases are caused by this problem. You mean like chronic life-threatening diseases? Yes. Yeah. And even ones that are some that are non-life-threatening, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. just syndromes, I suppose you call them, personality disorders and so forth. Many yeah. of them are caused by familial spirits, yes. people who are members of the family who the parents have an openness towards receiving the influence of that then the child therefore is not protected from the influence. And as a result, the child develops the same disorder. Mm -hmm. And this is why there's the, this is belief in the medical profession in genetically passed down disorders. And some conditions that skip generations. Exactly. Yeah. And usually many conditions, actually there is a high number of conditions that skip generations that mm -hmm. go from the grandchild to the grand. The grandparent Parent to the, to the grandchild. The grandchild. Yeah. And the medical profession doesn't really understand it, but, but they, they call it dormant genes and all mm -hmm. sorts of... They come up with all sorts... And the, the reality is there are effects in the physical body that cause certain things yeah. to occur like this, uh, also caused by the same influences. Yes. Um, but, yeah, a lot of these kind of chronic diseases are the result, that, that are life-threatening and even ones that are not life-threatening many times are caused by spirit influence. And that's interesting what you just said. You're not saying that the physical process of the d illness, disease and genetics doesn't occur. You're saying it, it does. It does occur. But it's influenced. Well, it's, to it's almost totally under the control, yeah, control of the influence by, by the spirit. Spirits. Yes. And emotional, uh, emotions held in family lines that are Correct. unloving and unhealed. Correct. Yeah. That's very interesting and it's just such a broad scope, isn't it? This yes. question was about some examples and yes. really you've given us... A There's huge... a large number of examples. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, yeah, if people knew how much influence they were under, they would take a long, sincere, hard look at what's really going on mm -hmm. and investigate it more thoroughly, scientifically. Mm -hmm. The reality is because we're so focused on the physical body, we block all of these areas of scientific endeavour in terms of discovery. And the problem with doing that is we become completely unaware of the actual causes of different problems. And as a result, we, we continue with the same problems even though we have all sorts of medicines developed now 
we have a growing number of problems. Yes. And really, listening to this, it, if I had no knowledge of spirits, it would sound pretty scary and almost macabre. You're saying that, <laughs> you know, wow, there's all these unseen people that are really controlling our lives and causing us to get sick and yeah, die. And, mm. Yeah, and it's all I can out, see it's why... It's all because things are out of harmony with love, though. Mm -hmm. It's really a simple problem. Mm -hmm. And the, if, we, if we reduce the problem back to its simple form, it's really because of the choices that each individual make that, out of, that makes that is out of harmony with love. And whenever we make choices out of harmony with love, and remember this is God's definition of love, not our own, whenever we make a choice out of harmony with God's definition of love, there is always a painful, negative, suffering-based response, either in ourselves or in, in our family or in society generally. Mm -hmm. And this is constantly going on as a feedback mechanism. It's, it, God's trying to show us the choices that we've made out of harmony with love and the results of it. And, and the issue we face is that we need to make different choices. And if we, if we investigated this more thoroughly, scientifically and otherwise, we would find the direct correlation between many of these diseases and the spirit involvement in these diseases. And as a result, we would cure many hundreds of thousands, if not millions mm. of people who are currently in pain and suffering on the planet. Mm. Mm. Okay. This is why in the first century, many of the diseases that I am recorded in curing were all cured by the exorcism of spirits. Mm. If you remember, if a person reads their Bible accurately, they will find that there are many times when I had discussions with spirits relating to the malady that existed inside of a living person. And once the spirit was removed, the person became better straight away, instantly. Yeah, and this is interesting though for me because I, there historically, in churches, there has been, in some cases, a belief in um, demons and devils and dark spirits creating problems and possessing people and mm -hmm. people having exorcisms and things. Mm -hmm. But it seems to me that there was a vital um, part Ingredient missing. missing. <laughs> yes, love was, wouldn't be the vital part. Would it? <laughs> love, love for the spirits involved exactly. in the overcloaking or the possession, exactly. but also the the issue of the why this has happened, the exactly. attraction. No scientific knowledge about why the attraction occurred. In other words, there's this sort of, and, and in fact, the, you know, in the Bible, there's no real record of the emotional reasons why people attracted the spirits they attracted. Mm -hmm. And there is no record of me having the discussions, of course, mm -hmm. which were quite often involved with the spirits and the persons trying to educate them mm -hmm. as to what was the underlying cause of their particular malady or disease. And once we understand these particular things from a, from a scientific perspective, from a, from a medical perspective, then we have a far greater ability to heal these particular things than we currently do. Mm -hmm. At the moment, because we're focusing all of our energy on the, on, the, on the physical solution, the medical and physical solution, we are not seeing all of the causes and as a result, we're not curing the problem. Mm -hmm. And it's quite obvious, in fact, we're not curing the problem because many of these problems are getting worse even though we have much more medicine available to us mm -hmm. at this point in time to cure them. So, so my suggestion to the medical profession would be there has to be other causes going on here. It's obvious through the, the, the fact that we have more medicine and still have more problems than we had historically means that there's got to be another cause mm. that's logical. So what I'm suggesting the cause is, is this relationship between the person, their addictions and the spirit and their addictions and how they're influencing the individual. And this is the area of investigation that needs to be thoroughly investigated. And there's all sorts of scientific things we can do to investigate that. I could make up a program for the next 20 years for somebody if they wanted to. Yeah. But uh, that, that would come out with very, very good results. Uh, but we need to have a desire to do it. Yeah, so, so you're the... not advocating exorcisms either. You're not advocating a... Um dismantling of the medical system and science and just going back to uh, casting holy water onto people and uh, no, speaking well, see, in Latin. See, when I talk about an exorcism, it's completely different to what the average person on this planet believes one to be. Mm -hmm. you know, I've watched some videos of people doing exorcism and there's nothing like what I'm talking about whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And in fact, completely 
if what they're doing is completely harming the individuals in many cases and causing even more problems than they had in the past. So I would not recommend any of those things. What I'm recommending is a scientifically accurate process yeah. that will cause the cure of every single person if they engage the process just like I cured every single person I met who engaged the process in the first century. There were people in the first century I did not cure because they refused to engage the process. Yeah. And God's laws cannot be broken with any cure. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do in the medical profession at the moment to circumvent the spirit influence is we're trying to f come up with a physical cure, but it, that doesn't address the cause. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is address the cause. And once we address the cause, the physical cure is automatically going to be the result. And so just to clarify, finally, are you saying that all illness is as the result of negative spirit influence? All, all illness does have some negative spirit influence because all illness is created by the suppression of particular emotions and addictions, unloving, in other words, unloving beliefs inside of the individual who's alive on earth, mm -hmm. and that causes spirit attachments uh, anyway. Yes. So the reality is there is a spirit involved in every single event that is negative in a person's life generally, mm -hmm. but not because they, you know, they can't be prevented from being involved, it's because of the choice the individual on earth who is alive is making at the mm -hmm. time. And, and what we need to do is understand our choices and the results of them and make different choices. That's what mm -hmm. we need to do. Then we would have complete control over the situation. So we can't go around blaming the spirits for our disease. We, if the spirits are the results of certain attractions that are occurring as a result of what we're denying inside of ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that we need to address first. Sure. We can't go around blaming all the spirits for all of these problems because they're just being attracted to it. In a, in a different answer that I gave in the FAQs, and I forget which question it was, mm -hmm. I said quite clearly that if all of us here on earth were in a second dimensional condition in terms of love from God's perspective, there could be no negative spirit influence that occurs on earth. Mm -hmm. None at all. Therefore, there would be no disease which involved any person in the spirit world on earth. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the, like 99% of all of physical sickness on earth would disappear under those circumstances. That's the reality. The only physical disease that would be present after that is the disease that's within us by our own choice. Yeah. yeah. But unfortunately, because of our current choices, we are not in that condition. We are in a hellish condition here on earth we also then attract all of these spirits who are also in a hellish condition and many of them have diseases. Many of them have diseases and maladies they had while on earth and they still have them in the spirit world because they haven't worked through the reason why they got the disease in the first place. And as a result, those diseases are imposed further upon the earth and upon people who are in a similar condition and this exacerbates the problem mm -hmm. and, uh, and this is the reason why we have a large amount of growing illnesses on the planet. Mm. 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 Our body is created perfectly. We have the ability to circumvent all of these things inside of our body if it's engaged in harmony with love. That's yeah. what we need to remember. Great. Yeah. Thank you. But that's how our spirits can influence us negatively. Yeah. Isn't it? So quite, yeah. quite a lot. Possibly quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah.